Deutschland, a guy trying to help out the butterflies. And this video is all about NPV. NPV stands for nuclear polyhedrosis virus. And a lot of people will call it NPV virus, which the V is kind of redundant then, but I think you get the gist of it. Well, my most recent video, I showed you how with OE parasites, you can cleanse the eggs with a bleach treatment solution. At the time of making that video, I was showing others how to do it with full knowledge that I wouldn't be doing that to every single egg and leaf that I use. The reason being, OE parasites, they're not really that prevalent here in Michigan. I've kept track through testing, and I've only had one monarch ever have OE parasites ever since I started testing them. So I made the video, and I had that out there for those who live in an OE prevalent area to be able to use and equip themselves to sterilize their eggs. However, it was essentially one week after posting that video, I had a really bad day with the monarchs. Everything was fine the night before, but then I woke up and I found essentially 25 or so caterpillars lying dead waiting for me. And this wasn't all in one container, this was spread out over four different containers. Now I want to be clear with you, I don't know for sure that this was NPV, this could also be a bacterial infection. Whatever the case may be, an NPV video is definitely long overdue. And the bleach solution we're going to show you how to make can actually prevent NPV and bacterial infections. And it can also prevent OE parasites from being on your leaves too. Alright, so what is NPV? Nuclear polyhedrosis virus. For starters, it's a virus, which means it's not really alive and it's not really dead at the same time. This is actually a turf war for a lot of molecular biologists who debate whether or not a virus counts as a living thing or not. At any rate, I'm still going to use terminology such as how to kill the virus as I talk about it. And the virus lays dormant in a crystalline type of structure. It waits for something to eat it. Once the virus has been ingested, these crystals, they need an alkaline solution to wake them up. Alkaline means the opposite of acidic. It's basic. And our monarch caterpillars have just that, a basic alkaline cell structure. The solutions that make up their cells are a little bit basic. This breaks down the crystals and allows the virus to come out and turns it on, makes it active. In which case, like many viruses, it takes over the cell and starts reproducing much more of itself. Eventually, these ones that are reproduced, they form new crystals and this interferes with the metabolism and the anatomy and physiology of the caterpillar, eventually killing it. And here's the bad news, it is fatal. Once your caterpillar has this virus, it is not going to make it. There's nothing you can really do. So to battle NPV, it's all about knowing the symptoms and preventing it from further spreading. And you don't have to worry about you getting this virus because you're a mammal like me. We have acidic-based cells, and so there's no way for this virus to start to reproduce itself inside of us. All right, so let's talk about the symptoms. How do you know if you have a monarch that's infected with this? First symptom, loss of appetite. The caterpillar starts to decline food. It might still eat a little bit, but it's definitely not eating as vigorously as others that are not infected. Next, when the caterpillar is definitely on its way out and the virus is killing it, it starts to become way less firm. It's not nearly as plump. If you touch your caterpillars, usually they feel like they've got a certain amount of body pressure that's pushing back on your finger. When they have this virus in full throttle, they're going to start to feel a little bit more squishy. Another symptom, your caterpillar regurgitates, vomits up a lot of its food, and it'll usually be a very liquidy green color. In fact, when it comes to the seizure behavior that my caterpillars were having, I couldn't find anything about NPV causing that, so this might be a bacterial infection. I don't really know. In addition, my caterpillars never actually turned black, which is another signature symptom of NPV. After the outbreak I most recently had, though, now I will definitely be treating all of my leaves with a bleach solution. I don't want to risk this anymore. So here's the good news. That bleach solution that we made to battle the OE parasites, that same solution can be used to kill NPV virus. Check that out. In one sentence I said kill a virus, and I said NPV virus. Hey, I'm a nerd who thinks that stuff's funny. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a much larger batch of that solution, and I'm going to give you the math so that way it's just easy for you to do. But before we get into that, let's first cover what are the steps you should take if you do have an outbreak situation. Or even, what if you just have one that shows signs of this? 
First rule to follow, I think, and the most important one, assume everything is contaminated. Let's say you've got one caterpillar that's coming down with this and you've got five others in that same container, a total of six. You need to assume that all six have it now. You also need to assume that every single leaf has this stuff on it. You must assume that the container is completely contaminated on all surfaces with this virus. It's the only way to be safe is to assume it's everywhere and then proceed from there. As far as how NPV spreads, it's through this liquidy stuff that's either pooed out or regurgitated. If it's on the leaves and another caterpillar comes by and ingests it, then it now has NPV as well. So even if you see that some caterpillars haven't eaten the leaves that have this goo on it, you still can't assume that they haven't contracted it. It's too easy to catch. For any caterpillars that you have that have obvious signs of infection, they're having the seizures, they're regurgitating, they're pooing out the liquid, those need to, unfortunately, be euthanized. The most humane way to deal with this, as far as I understand, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, would be to place the caterpillar into a sealable type of plastic bag and place it in the freezer. Once that's finished, there's still something to do. When the caterpillar is deceased, take that bag out of the freezer and pour into it a little bit of straight bleach, then seal it back up. That can then just be thrown away in the trash. That concentration of bleach is going to make sure no NPV can survive. For any caterpillars that just might be infected but aren't necessarily showing signs, what I would urge you to do is quarantine them away from not only other monarch caterpillars, but from each other too. Let's go back to that hypothetical situation where you had six and one was clearly showing signs of infection. Well, with those other five, maybe just two of them are infected and the other three aren't. If you keep all five of those together, the other three that aren't infected will become infected. You have to assume that. So I know this might be difficult to do depending upon how many you have, but try to separate them out into as many different containers as you can. And in those containers, keep from adding in other monarchs as well. They are now quarantined, and you'll just have to wait and see if they make it all the way to adulthood. Next, any leaves that were in there need to be removed and destroyed. And then finally, 100% sanitize the container that this was in and any tools that came into contact or possibly came into contact with the virus. And that includes your hands. Here I'm going to show you how to make the solution and then we're going to cleanse some leaves and kill any possible NPV virus that might be on them. Let's do it. Okay, so just like last time, we're going to make a 5% leaf solution, but we need a lot more of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to make one gallon. And I'm going to start with one gallon of water. Now a 5% bleach solution means 1 20th of the solution will be bleach. A gallon is 128 fluid ounces. So you can take that number, divide it by 20, and you get 6.4 fluid ounces. That means of all the water in here, there's 20 parts that are 6.4 fluid ounces. We want to remove one of those parts of water and replace it with that same amount of bleach. So we want to pour out 6.4 fluid ounces and then put in 6.4 fluid ounces of bleach. So with the measuring cup, measure out 6.4 fluid ounces or you can go a little bit above because it doesn't have to perfectly be a 5% bleach solution. It needs to be at least 5%. It could be a little bit more than that. You don't want to go too much and over bleach your leaves. You don't want to deal with like a 10% or 20% bleach solution because that could start to damage the leaf. Don't know if you can hear the lawnmower, but sorry about that. Nothing I can do. So now I've removed 6.4 fluid ounces of water, and now I'm going to pour in 6.4 fluid ounces of bleach. Careful not to spill. I'm going to want a funnel for this, because I don't want any bleach on my clothes. Now, once you have that 6.4 fluid ounces into the rest of your water, it should add up back to one gallon. Make sure the lid's on tight and you want to give it some thorough mixing so that way it gets consistent all throughout. Remember chemistry class? Homogeneous. Voila! 5% bleach solution. One gallon of it. Now you won't need all of this and just like last time when we made the solution, this is our stock solution. We can pour from here and this will stay good for a long time. So you'll need a container that can hold about a gallon, though you don't need all of that. Pour in your bleach solution. 
You want enough to totally submerge the leaves in it. I'm going to use about half. Still got some for next time. Now after the leaves come out of here, I'm going to then rinse them off in a bucket here that is filled with water. It's just tap water. It doesn't have to be anything special. So I'm going to take from the bleach solution, go directly into a bucket of water, but then I'm going to go from that bucket to another bucket of water. You see, some of our bleach solution is going to be on the leaves that we place in here. So eventually, that concentration of bleach is going to build up in there a little bit. It won't ever be a large concentration, but still, just to be on the extra safe side, I'm then going to rinse them one more time. Now, to be honest, I do think probably just rinsing in the first one should be enough. But again, I'm just being extra safe in using two. And you don't need to use buckets for this. You could certainly just rinse them off by hand at the faucet if you're only doing a few leaves at a time. But make sure when you rinse, you rinse even more than you think you have to. Once our leaves are rinsed, I'm going to place them right here on a paper towel and be able to dry them off. So I've got 12 freshly picked leaves here. And unlike bleaching the eggs and treating those for OE, you don't have to be super careful about being at the exact one minute mark. These can be in there a little bit longer and it's not going to do too much harm. You don't want to soak them or anything, then some of the bleach could start to leach into the leaf and that could be a problem. But about one to two minutes should be all that you would need to kill any NPV virus. So I'm going to place them in there about one at a time. Make sure to separate them so they all get covered. You might notice too as you're doing this, you are also then bleaching your fingers. And so you might as well just get your whole hand submerged in there and just kind of help bleach treat your hands too in case they have any NPV on there. Agitate them. Okay, it's been about one and a half, two minutes. Now I'm going to go directly from the bleach solution into our bucket of water our first bucket of water. You can see plenty of that bleach does drip into that bucket. And that's why I've got that second bucket. Again, I think that this would be safe to just rinse in this much water. I've got a good number of gallons in this bucket. But just to be on the extra safe side, I'm going to rinse twice. I'm making sure to agitate them again. I would say good agitation for about a minute or two. Pretty much the same amount of time you had them in the bleach solution would be good in the first bucket. After about that amount of time has gone by, take them from the first bucket, put them into the second bucket. If you're doing this right, your fingers should not feel slippery any longer from the bleach that was on them. That slippery feeling, that's the feeling of the bleach. And if you can still feel any of that, well then you have not rinsed thoroughly enough. Do this for about another minute or two. And then after that amount of time, start taking them out. Lay them down someplace sterile and dry. And you can start patting them dry. While we're doing this too, maybe now's a good time to bring up, some have asked me if I know much about the other milkweed species and which ones the butterfly prefers more. And I would say, you know, grow what you want. I prefer to only plant things that are native to Michigan in my Michigan backyard. I don't want to accidentally have some introduced species or even invasive species issue. And so I just make it a rule to always follow that. But if you can really choose, and common milkweed grows in your area anyway, Asclepius syriaca, I mean, look at that leaf size. This is going to provide you with plenty of food. And sure, maybe there is a species of milkweed out there that the monarch prefers, but I've never had them really have a problem with laying on common milkweed. They'll do it if you provided it. So why not go with a leaf size like that? I mean, come on, look at how big that is. Now, I don't need all these leaves right now. So one more thing I wanted to show, and I've shown this before in my other videos, but what I'm going to do is first I'm going to wrap them in these little swatches of paper towel that have been moistened. So take a leaf, wrap up the stem, make sure it's nice and moist, 
and then that can go for me. I go paper towel in first, and I can place this into a plastic bag so I can save this and use it for later. Okay, last one. So now, with this batch of 12 leaves, and place these all into the same plastic bag here. And I don't seal it, but that right there can just go into the fridge as is. And these stay for a good three days at least in the refrigerator. I don't really know how long they'll last because I've always eventually gotten to the point where I need to use them before they've gone bad. But yeah, this stocks very well. So, what do you think? Not too bad, right? And I still have a good batch of bleach solution, which I'll get to use next time. Do you need to do this? That's up to you. It depends. I'm really making this video for people who have told me this summer that they've really had a lot of NPV showing up in their monarchs that they're trying to raise. So this video is meant to equip you. If you've been having a lot of that, hopefully this gets you some results. But I would recommend this. Have at least some bleach solution already made up and ready. Just in case you do get that one caterpillar that shows that they have NPV, you can quickly sanitize and take care of that. Do you need to bleach treat every single leaf from that point on? That is up to you, but you will have the sanitary equipment ready in case you do need to do some sanitation and some quarantine because of a little outbreak or a big one. Last, I want to give a shout out to those who have been mentioning that they are doing this with their son and or daughter. Uh, I think it's so awesome that you're getting the youth involved with this too. And hey, if you've got kids or you're just a kid at heart, maybe check out the Indie Lab series that is also on this channel. There's a lot of at-home science experiments that if you like the way I do raising monarchs, you might like what I'm doing there too. Give it a look. See if there's something there for you. I'm Rich Lund, and thank you very much for helping me help out the monarchs. See you next time.